all those good and wonderful things you've done for all those people. When you helped your brother, you helped your friend, you helped your partner do something and you couldn't wait to get that pat on the back, that recognition, and it never came. And you started thinking to yourself, why don't they thank me? Don't they see all my hard work? Can't they see how good I am? Why don't they give it back to me? Or you sit there and you wait to receive some reciprocation for your deed and then you don't get it and you start to be annoyed by that. Yes, welcome to being a human being. All of us experience things like that. Today's video is going to help us understand how backwards that is with the understanding and compassion that it's inevitable that we're going to have little feelings like that, expectations, and to remind ourselves of the ancient teachings. And the ancient teachings remind us that we don't do the thing because we expect some sort of outcome. We don't do it to get a pat on the back. And when we hold on to expectations, it's a nasty recipe for a resentment, and it's never going to lead to something helpful. It's just going to cause more and more negative emotion. This is the Search With Me channel. My name is Mike Stroh. This channel is all about helping you increase your capacity for resilience and well-being and to be the best version of yourself. I'm a therapist, a meditation teacher, someone in long-term recovery from addiction and mental illness. I hope you find this video helpful. From the Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday, July 13th, A Leader Leads. One person, on doing well by others, immediately accounts the expected favor in return. Another is not so quick, but still considers the person a debtor and knows the favor. A third kind of person acts as if not conscious of the deed, rather like a vine producing a cluster of grapes without making further demands, like a horse after its race, or a dog after its walk, or a bee after making its honey. Such a person, having done a good deed, won't go shouting from the rooftops, but simply moves on to the next deed just like the vine produces another bunch of grapes in the right season. Marcus Aurelius Meditations 5.6. The reading goes on. Have you ever heard someone else repeat one of your ideas as though it were their own? Did you ever notice a younger sibling or relative mimic your behavior? Perhaps the way you dress or the music you listen to? Maybe you moved to a new neighborhood and a bunch of hipsters followed. When we, are a, when we are young and inexperienced, we can react negatively to these situations. Stop copying me. I was here first. As we mature, we start to see them in a different light. We understand that stepping up and helping is a service that leaders provide to the world. It's our duty to do this in big situations and small ones. If we expect to be leaders, we must see that Thankless service comes with the job. We must do what leaders do because it's what leaders do. Not for the credit, not for the thanks, not for the recognition. It's our duty. Okay, some initial reflections on that reading. As sometimes comes up in these daily readings in the Daily Stoic, the ideas I don't always think fit together all that well. They're all wise and helpful and useful. Sometimes they just don't quite uh, fit together that well. So let us start with the Marcus Aurelius quote, this idea of we do the activity because that's what we do, not because we expect something in return or we keep a ledger of I did this for you, I did this for you, I did this for you, why aren't you doing it back? That's such a common problem for people. And in some ways you can't help your mind keeping track of those things. We do have a bit of like a sociometer in our head that tallies up the deeds that are happening around us. What we're trying to learn through Stoic wisdom or other insight practices is to notice that process happening, keeping score, expecting other people to do things, doing certain behaviors because we think there's an ulterior motive to it, meaning we'll get it back in return or we can hold somebody 
sort of guilt trip somebody in the future for not giving it back to us. Okay. All of that is unwise. It's unhelpful. It's not desired or ideal behavior. And I think the Marcus Aurelius quote here really zooms our attention in on that. So how can we be like the dog who returns from its walk? How can we be the grapevine that just grows and produces grapes? Because that's what it does. If we practice living in alignment with Stoic principles or other moral ethical principles, then we behave that way because that's what we've been trained to do and that's what the principles teach us. And we know that if we do that, that is good. If we get a pat on the back, if we get reciprocation, or if we have some sort of recognition at some point, we can be grateful for that. We can appreciate that. We can have a moment of gratification from that. And then we move on and we go back to the task. It's not about what we get. It's why we do what we do and sticking to that. I remember in my recovery journey after about my first six months of sobriety, I had this moment uh, with my sponsor and he said to me, yeah, buddy, only addicts expect a pat on the back for things that normal people do. Okay. And I thought to myself, wow, so this is what normal people do. We take responsibility for our feelings. We show up on time. We work hard. We try to be a good person and, and I'm not supposed to get anything in, in return for that. What the hell? That doesn't seem right. And yes, that is what, I don't know about normal people. Okay. But that's what, we want to be embodying, we want to be living in that direction of ethics, morals, virtues, etc. Those are all kind of the same thing, in my opinion. Again, without the expectation of something coming back to us. Okay. The next part of the video or of the reading, and this is Ryan Holiday's take, um, of this idea of people copying us, people emulating us, and then us being irritated by that. Now, to me, that doesn't really fit the first part of the reading. Nevertheless, being a leader, we want people to copy us if we are leaders. And being a mature leader, if you will, is one who, again, is not attached to how other people perceive our behavior. So if people copy us, great. If people don't copy us and criticize us, great. We are doing these behaviors because we know they're the right thing to do. And we know that they help us create a better life for ourselves and ideally, ultimately, help create a better world, okay, in principle. And again, we're not tying all these things together. We're sort of doing the thing because it's the right thing to do. If it leads to a better world, wonderful. If other people emulate us and have better lives themselves, wonderful. That's it. Okay? It's not about copying. It's not about being resentful for other people not being original, etc. You know, and as young people, I do remember myself being super irritated when I thought other people were copying me. And there, I think there is a developmental value in us crafting our identities and seeing us as seeing ourselves right as individuals although there is an immaturity to that okay the next piece of this idea of thankless service right stepping up and helping as a service that we provide to the world is our duty i think that correlates to the reading much better than the first part of the the first paragraph nevertheless we do it again as I've already said, because that's what we're supposed to do, not because of the recognition. And if we develop this practice over time and we get a foundation in it and we embody it consistently over time, then that recognition and our relationship to the transcendent, to Buddha nature, to God, to the universe, higher power, our higher self, whatever it is, our relationship to these principles and ethics and virtues and to our conception of the universe of buddha whatever that in and of itself is the reward is that that internal recognition of ah yes i'm living in alignment with the principles 
And that becomes the reward because we know it's good. We know it's right. We have experience of the outcomes being what we want. We have experience of seeing the goodness that comes from these activities and behaviors. And then it really helps us let go of the expectation of a pat on the back. It helps us let go of an expectation of some sort of acknowledgement that if we don't get, then we think something's wrong. It also really helps us let go of difficult relationships, if you will, or difficult attachments in relationships, because I do a lot of things for my kids. Of course, they're not grateful. Of course, they don't give me a pat on the back. Sometimes they'll say thank you, et cetera. But it, I'm not doing a lot for them because I expect them to say, oh, my dad's so great. He does so much for me. Young people aren't capable of that. Little kids, they're not really capable of that. Of course, I'm generalizing, but as a theme, adults do act like children. Many people are not capable of this either. And they may throw in some guilt trips or they may, you may notice yourself guilt tripping other people because you're not getting a pat on the back. So I think I've belabored this point quite a bit already. And if you are to take a practice home with you, you know, one side of the page, again, we'll just keep it simple as I have in the other videos. One side of the page, what are my actions? What are my virtues? Or how, how am I trying to live in alignment with these stoic wisdom practices? And again, I can't help myself. They're not unique to stoicism. These are common spiritual wisdom practices. But what are they? And can I take inventory of whether or not I'm expecting things from other people as a result of my behaviors? So what are the behaviors? What are the expectations that we have of those behaviors? And perhaps the other column would be, are there any people that I'm holding responsible or that I'm expecting something from that I'm not getting? And perhaps you might develop a little bit of insight from that in terms of, is my relationship with these people changing? Am I acting strangely around them? Am I doing anything in particular that is in reference to I've done something and I'm expecting somebody else to give me something back or to acknowledge that. Okay. I think that is helpful. It seemed like my mind seemed to be in a good place. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, this is a wonderful practice. This is a good stoic principle, a wisdom principle that really will help you in your day-to-day -day life. So if you found it helpful, please like this video comment on it, share some insight or how this might apply to you. Subscribe to this channel, please. And you could even go so far as to support it on Patreon. Again, my name is Mike Stroh. Starts with me, channel. I hope you found that helpful. Thank you very much. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.